An atom of uranium-235 has the useful property that when struck by a stray neutron, it may split, producing a flash of heat and still more neutrons. If the amount of uranium is very small, these neutrons have very little effect, as they simply go on their way and are lost. One way to make use of these neutrons is to add more uranium. Now, if the secondary neutrons strike this uranium, they will produce a chain reaction. Early experiments at Columbia University and the University of Chicago were designed to verify this fact and determine the number of neutrons produced in an average fission. This process occurs constantly at a very low rate in any piece of uranium-235. A stray neutron may split a uranium atom and produce still more neutrons. The secondary neutrons, however, travel very fast and normally are lost before they are likely to cause a second fission. One way to overcome this is to add still more uranium. This increases the likelihood that the neutron will split another atom before it escapes. And if there is sufficient uranium assembled, a so-called critical mass, there will be a steady state where there will be enough neutrons produced to compensate for those lost or spent in splitting uranium atoms. With more fuel, the number of neutrons would gradually increase. With less fuel, the neutron population would gradually die out. One way we can control the process is by simply adding or removing fuel. The amount of fuel which is necessary to produce a critical mass depends on the probability that a particular neutron will be captured and split a uranium atom before it escapes from the reactor or is lost. To begin with, we can prevent some neutrons from escaping by surrounding the uranium core with a suitable reflector which will return some of the neutrons to the core and keep them in there for a longer period of time. But neutrons, particularly when they are traveling at a high velocity, are not easily caught and must travel through a great deal of uranium before they are likely to be captured. A slow neutron is much more likely to be captured. A reactor which depends on the capture of high velocity or fast neutrons is called a fast reactor. One advantage of fast reactors is that very few materials seriously absorb fast neutrons. So a wide range of structural materials can be used without absorbing a serious portion of the neutron population. Such a reactor is Argonne's experimental breeder reactor two. The fuel is in the form of uranium rods within a stainless steel case. Each such fuel assembly contains the energy of 180 tank cars of gasoline. The fuel elements are arranged in a bundle in the core of the reactor, and the reactor is controlled by adding or withdrawing fuel assemblies from this core. It is possible to make a second type of reactor by inserting into the reactor core a material which will slow down the neutrons. Usually this is water. As the neutrons recoil and bounce about among the molecules of water, they gradually lose energy until their energy corresponds to the temperature of the water molecules. Hence, these slow neutrons are referred to as thermal neutrons. A reactor which uses slow neutrons is referred to as a thermal reactor. Since these slow thermal neutrons are more likely to be absorbed, the reactor can be built with less fuel. Most reactors are of this type. Slow neutrons, however, are readily captured by a great many materials, and this seriously affects the design of reactor components. Cadmium, for instance, is a very efficient neutron absorber, and even a small amount of cadmium within the reactor can very effectively eliminate the possibility of a chain reaction. This absorption may be a problem in the design of reactors, or it may be a useful device to control a reactor. Many reactors are controlled by means of cadmium rods, which are inserted into the reactor to limit the rate of fission. Many safety devices are also based on the injection of such a poison into the reactor. So there are two principal types of reactors. Reactors which use only fuel 
and depend on the capture of fast neutrons are called fast reactors. A fast reactor is usually controlled directly by the addition or removal of fuel from the core. Reactors which use a moderator, such as water, to slow the neutrons to thermal velocities are called thermal reactors. Thermal reactors are usually controlled by rods of cadmium or a similar neutron absorber. Uranium-235 is extremely expensive. A single ounce is worth approximately $400, and it is the only naturally occurring fissionable material. There are, however, several other possible fuels which can be made in a reactor. For example, a man-made element, plutonium, is produced when uranium-238 is bombarded by neutrons. This conversion of U-238 occurs when a neutron penetrates the nucleus, producing a heavier atom, uranium-239. This U-239 decays to produce plutonium, which is fissionable and can be used as a reactor fuel. Uranium-238 is very common. There is approximately 140 times as much as uranium-235 and the possibility of converting this into an almost limitless supply of nuclear fuel is one of the most promising avenues of reactor development. Fast neutrons are most likely to penetrate the U-238 and bring about a larger fraction of useful reactions. So we surround the core of a fast reactor with a blanket of this readily available U-238. Whenever the reactor is operating, this blanket is bombarded by fast neutrons and gradually some of the U-238 is converted to plutonium. Eventually we can remove the blanket, separate out the plutonium and use it to manufacture new fuel elements. When an atom of fuel in a reactor fissions, two or more neutrons may be produced. One of these simply replaces the neutron which initiated the reaction. A second neutron can be used to produce a new atom of fuel, replacing the one which was split. So a minimum of two neutrons must be produced in order to simply maintain the supply of fuel which is burned in the reactor. We are fortunate that under certain circumstances, an average substantially more than two neutrons are produced. By very careful design of the reactor, we are actually able to produce significantly more fuel than the reactor consumes. A number of other nuclear reactions possess the capability of breeding new fuel. For example, thorium may be converted to produce uranium-233, and this reaction has the particular advantage of being feasible in the thermal reactor. Both this and the plutonium process carry important implications for the production of economic nuclear power and the full utilization of all the potential energy available in our thorium and uranium resources.